What's up, everybody? It's Death, and thanks for tuning in to another episode on Lockdown 23 and 1. And tonight, we got blizzard warnings in Virginia Beach. Blizzard, okay? We should be waking up with some record-breaking snow tomorrow. So I'm bundled up, got my sweats, my thermal on, ready to play a little Call of Duty, snuggle, you know, the drill. When it's about to snow and you know it's coming and there's no avoiding it. Anyway, so what's better to do during a blizzard than do a little nighttime prison story time? That's right. We got some stories for you today. It's going to be three stories today that I'm going to tell you on prison story time. And they're not really about killing. Okay? They're not about uh, rape. They're not about robbing. They are about comedy, unfortunately. But they are some of the craziest comedy stories that I'll probably ever see in my life. Okay? Anyways, let's go ahead and get right into story number one. This is about... A a crazy diabetic man that I knew in prison. He was my cell neighbor, okay? This guy, I can't remember. None of these guys' names is the sad part. And I spent years with them, and I don't remember their names. But uh, I do remember this. You know, uh, okay, so this guy's a diabetic. And he's always, like, on the brink of diabetic diabetic shock I guess when you where they just like faint or whatever I don't know I don't really I haven't really understood diabetics high low blood sugar I, I really don't understand I got a little bit of understanding but not much anyway so this guy is my cell neighbor okay so we kind of watch each other's cells and I don't really need no one to watch myself but I watch his cell for him and I expect the same for me even though I know no one's gonna go in my cell Anyway, so this guy and hit me got pretty close throughout the years, and um, he was a diabetic, of course. So one, we used to when they call for chow, they open up the Sally Port doors and they let us go down the stairs and go outside to. There's a sidewalk that leads to the chow hall. So this guy, he was always since he was my cellmate or cell neighbor, his cell door was always like open before mine okay so he got a head start to go to the cafeteria before me and before I keep on telling you this story uh, have you ever seen like uh, in lunch I don't know if it was just my high school growing up or y'all's high schools were like this but there's always like three types of chow hall people okay three of them there was one chow hall person when they called for uh, lunch time lunch bell or whatever there was always that one person that uh he walked fast but didn't want to run to chow you know what i mean he walked real fast power walking trying to seem legit like he wasn't really running but he was running for real but he was walking and uh they're always in a rush to get to the cafeteria but they didn't want to look like an idiot by going full speed and there was always a number two per kind of person he would just you know, jog. You would see a weirdo every now and then flying to the cafeteria in high school. Like, dang, man, do you not eat at home? And then, you know, so there's also another guy, pretty crazy, and he's one of those cool walkers. He don't care about anything. He don't care about no line in chow hall because when he walks up in that chow hall, he's going to cut that line. He's one of the cool guys. Line breaker, rule, rule breaker. Everyone hates him sitting in line. But they ain't going to say nothing to him. Well, you know what? Prison's almost exactly like that. You're going to have some weirdos freaking hauling butt to the chow hall. And then you got the mother gang members low key walk right in and get in front of everyone. And no one even says nothing. It's just like, you know, a lot of things are very similar to like the military, high school, stuff like that are very similar to prison, believe it or not, in certain ways. Anyways, back to the prison story. With that being said, uh, this guy always used to be in front of me when I was walking to Chow. He used to walk pretty fast, man. I walked a good pace because I didn't want to. I wanted to beat the crowd, but I didn't freaking power walk. But I, also, I didn't bullcrap either. I just walked straight to Chow, ate, and left. 
But this guy was always in front of me. And when he was walking to Chowho one day, he started lagging behind. Like, I, I caught up to him. I said, you're, you're falling back, old man, falling back. And he didn't say nothing back. I didn't care. I'm going to Chow. So, uh, next thing you know, we're in line. I'm getting my trays. I said, man, where's so-and-so? He was right behind. He was right in front of us. He, we passed him. He goes, I don't know, man. He, this ain't like him, though. Anyway, so we sit down and eat our trays. And for breakfast that morning was... Uh, waffles, I think. It was some kind of fake artificial Lego waffles. And, you know, they give us a little cup of syrup, maybe some peanut butter for it. And uh, we sit down and start eating our trays, and all of a sudden, and this is winter time, okay? Freezing. Uh, all of a sudden, he comes crawling in the exit door, okay? Someone opened the door to leave, and he's crawling in, because that's closer to the cafeteria than the entrance door. He's crawling in, uh, you know, crawling, flat on his stomach. He ain't even using his legs. And all of a sudden, he screams, sugar! <laughs> <coughs> he screams, sugar! And everyone's like, oh my god, he's going in diabetic uh, shock, man. He's going diabetic shock. So what they do? They had this bit, this uh, guy from that was working the syrup section in the line. Huge dude, man. And he had his, his kitchen gear was so tight, it looked like freaking his skin. He was so big. So he came out running with the. Uh, and he could have just gotten like a cup, a regular cup of syrup. But I think he was going to enjoy this more than anything. He grabbed the whole metal container of syrup, okay? And he's like sloshing around when he's running with a smile on his face. And he dumps all the syrup onto the diabetic's face. And the diabetic guy's like this. Oh! <laughs> he's just drinking the syrup. And then within an instant, he's back up again. Walks right back to the housing complex. Takes his shower and makes sure his sugar's right. Anyways, that was one of the craziest stories I've seen. Funny, man. I mean, I was just dying laughing. Everyone was laughing the way he poured all that syrup on his face. Anyways, story number two, man. Let's get right into this one. Okay, so the second story is going to be about uh, this guy I was cool with, too. But, you know, I didn't. I wasn't one too close to him. So, I didn't really understand anything that he was going through, really, like, emotionally and stuff like that. But... Uh, I was I played cards with him every now and then and stuff like that. So this guy he lived uh, on the second tier above me. There was two floors, and he lived in the second floor. And this is summertime. We're in summertime now, and in the prison that I was in called Greensville, it did not have any AC at the time, none whatsoever. All we had were fans. Okay. And um, now they have AC, and those guys are very lucky, because I remember the freaking walls used to sweat. It was so hot. It was like hell on earth. We prayed for the sun to go down. Anyways, so fans were so vital, and not to mention the ice maker in the block, okay? Uh, this ice maker looked like a uh, normal ice maker you see somewhere uh, industrial, you know, like a restaurant or something. It just shoots out ice. Anyways, you got to dump the ice in the top. A trustee or whatever usually came around once a day or twice a day in the summer and loaded more ice into the ice machine. So just keep in mind that the fans are the most important thing in this prison at this time, okay, in food and water. And uh, this guy got a fan, and the fans were survival in summertime. If you didn't have a fan, you are living in hell. This guy's fan got taken from him because it wasn't engraved. Well, you know what? He starts snapping this, that, and the third. And as soon as they leave and let us out, this guy was so mad that his fan was taken from him that he came out his cell butt naked, butterball naked, okay? Walked down the stairs. Everyone's like, what the hell? He's walking down the stairs butt naked and crawls or gets a chair puts it right next to the ice machine, takes off the lid, and crawls into the ice machine. He can't get his whole body in there, so it's just 
his legs and his upper torso sticking all the way out. So he's all you're seeing is freaking, you know, all that crap hanging around everywhere, man, and everyone and he's just crawling inside the ice box where everyone gets our ice. Okay, and this is summertime. He's butt naked in the ice machine. I'm surprised he didn't get killed. The deputies COs ran there so fast and got this guy and he was screaming the whole time. Y'all shouldn't have taken my effing fan. Y'all shouldn't have taken my effing fan. Butt naked getting dragged out the pod, man. And you, But another funny ending to this story, that was probably the second to my last day in that pod because there was no way that I was going to eat ice out of that vending machine or ice machine. I don't care how many times they disinfected it. I got the hell up out that block. I wanted to leave anyway. I was in there too long. If I'm in there for too long, I like to dip out, move on out. I don't like to be somewhere for freaking five years straight. Okay, I like to be there for like a year or two and go somewhere else and talk to other people, new people. It kills my time. Anyways, so yeah, story number two, Icebox Man. It's crazy, man. All right, let's get right into story number three. This one is about an African man. He was straight up from Africa, and as soon as he left prison, I believe they were going to be deporting him. Uh, but he was from Africa, and he had the accent, he had the looks. Uh, I mean, you know, there's African white people out there, of course, but this guy was black as midnight, skin bald. Uh, he had these little orange beads, African beads, all over his neck that he made himself and ordered off of canteen. He looked like he was straight from Zimbabwe. No bull crap. Anyway, so this is his first time playing uh, softball. He asked if he could play on our softball team. We said, sure, go right ahead. And it just so happens there'd be another brand new person playing today that we didn't know anything about if he was gonna be any good or not, so we threw him in outfield. He said he played in high school, this, that, and the third, that he was state champ. We were like, all right, well, you play an outfield for right now. Let's see what you got in batting and stuff, fielding. So he's an outfield, and this uh, African guy, he comes up to bat and hits his first day, too. But he said he played baseball in Africa. So first pitch of softball, he throws it up in there. African dude cranks it, man. And everyone was so shocked. And he cranks it to the other new guy in the outfield. But it gets past the guy in the outfield, the new guy that played for high school, just because it wasn't an error, it was just because he hit it in the hole. So this African dude, he is running, man, and he's like 50-some years old. He is flying, and he's going around, about to make a uh, inside-the-park home run. So he's, because the field wasn't, it was huge, okay? Prison yard baseball field is much bigger probably than a normal baseball field. So anyway, he's going around second, he's coming to third, and he's going home, and all of a sudden... That new high school state champion, man, he throws that baseball. Whew! Hey, he throws that sucker like freaking Peyton Manning, okay? And this African dude, he's running with a smile on his face, and he don't know what's about to happen. He's about to cross home plate, and that freaking all-star baseball player hit right before he steps on that home plate. That ball, softball smacks him right in the back of the freaking neck. I'm talking about the neck, man. Perfect shot. And this guy looked like, the African dude looked like he got shot, man. He just goes, he went from smiling and running to, uh, a slow-mo, you know what I mean? He just falls down on the ground like he got shot, man. And you know he's black as midnight. And he's sweaty. It's summertime. This guy, man, he gets up. <laughs> he's covered in orange dirt. <laughs> covered in orange dirt. His beads are blending in with his skin now because the beads were orange. And he's so mad, man. But he can't do nothing about it because it wasn't on purpose. You know what I mean? So it was a good game. We ended up, you know, everything was good. Nobody fought. We laughed it off in the cafeteria the next day. And all that night, man. I mean, we were replaying it and replaying it and replaying it in our heads and imitating it the whole freaking week. 
It was hilarious, man. And just let me remind you this. The African dude was in there for two murders. So even the murderers, man, they, they, they are some good guys and funny. And they can be forgiven and they can actually become a new person. Anyways. Well, y'all, I'm about to go ahead and tucker it down for this uh, winter blizzard. Can't wait. I love snow. I'm going to take my kids out sledding or something. We're supposed to have like 75 mile an hour winds, unvis invisibly no visible. Yeah, I don't even know if that makes sense, but it's not going to be visible out there in a few hours. So, if you haven't hit that like and subscribe button, man, you better freaking do it now. Yeah, you better do it now because I got so much funny and good prison stuff coming your way, man. Anyways, until the next time, Death I Bring, your favorite host, is signing out. Thanks for tuning in to Lockdown 23 and 1. It is my pleasure as always.